bespeaks of God's provision for us. There's something as well so powerful in breaking bread that reminds us that we're community, that we're united, that we're one, that we're his family.
Jesus speaks of God's provision for us. There's something as well so powerful in broken bread that reminds us that we're community, that we're united, that we're one, that we're his family. Fantastic to see you. It's been a really busy weekend here. Uh, well, certainly in the church we had on Friday the fantastic wedding. Most of you will have watched it of uh, Josh and Jordan. I don't know if they're on the stream this morning. Who knows? Maybe they'll comment if they are. We, uh, we All over the church there's like debris from the wedding still. So in the entrance there's still the table plan and all sorts of things. And there's loads of cupcakes all around the place which we are going to polish off later this morning but when I came this morning came to the door and on the door handle this was hanging this we tied to their car when they left our house yesterday they came to say happy birthday to Kezia on their way to their honeymoon and uh, so we tied this to their car and wrote just married on the back and this morning when I came it was hanging on the door there we go well done Josh and Jordan obviously maybe other people came and had a look and saw why are there cans hanging off the church door but I knew why well we are going to uh, worship God together this morning I was just uh, as we were praying just before we started I was just so aware that in a sense all of this lockdown and the fact that we're watching online and all of those things in a sense they're obstacles for us to overcome as we come to worship God together so this morning I think the challenge for us is to is to say to ourselves as David said in one of the Psalms, he said to his soul, worship the Lord. Uh, and so we need to say to ourselves this morning, come on, let's worship God together. Let's give him everything that, that we are. Easy to be a spectator when you're just watching on the telly or your phone or however you're watching. Let's determine in our hearts this morning, I'm going to give God all of my best. Let's uh, raise our voices in our homes and let's give him honour and glory. We're going to start... Uh, this morning by watching a video. This has been put together by Tim's Connect Group and it's a, it's a, it's a load of different verses from the Psalms which they've chosen and uh, hopefully it will uh, inspire you in your worship uh, to get with us this morning. So let's watch this video. Your word is a lamp to my feet, O Lord, and a light for my path. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. I was very glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord.
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. Are we there? Good, okay. Sorry about that. Switched the microphone and the second one didn't work. As I watched that video, and even this morning before I watched that video, I, I was uh, asking God really, what, what, how do we begin our worship together this morning? And as I, uh, I was just waiting on God, and then I watched that video and Norman read uh, one of the verses that was already in my mind. And uh, it seems a little bit odd that we, uh, that, that verse in a sense, he said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord, which may seem a bit odd, but actually the house of God is here in us now. And uh, as we worship together, we come right into his presence. And although we're separated from in different buildings, we're together in the presence of God. And, and so this morning, maybe as we worship together, you just want to remember that together we are seated with heavenly pla in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So although we are in different physical places, we're in the same place spiritually. We're in the presence of Jesus, seated with him in heavenly places. That psalm that Norman read, the first verse of Psalm 122, is one of the psalms of ascent. It's the songs that they sang together as they went to worship in Jerusalem. It's the songs that as they uh, uh, traveled and, you know, that time when Jesus was traveling from uh, Galilee to Jerusalem with his family to worship in the temple, they sang these songs together. And so as we sing together this morning, let's make it our declaration. We're going to the house of God. We're going to give our attention to him. We're getting into his presence to worship, to honor, and to declare his praises. Uh, Sarah and the band are going to lead us as we uh, sing together this morning. And let's raise our voices to honour him. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt sing together praise the father and praise the
kingdom come and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross, for even in your suffering, you stood to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake he died.
Every breath we 
thing it is for us to be able to worship God, what a thing it is for us to be able to honour him and lift his name high. As we sang that song before, it said, you wiped all my sin and you welcomed me in. And in a sense, the reason we break bread together this morning is to celebrate just that, that he has wiped our sin. We're welcomed into his family. And so this morning, we're going to break bread together. Uh, I hope you've got uh, something prepared at home for that. And uh, I'm going to read to you from Luke. Of course, this is the time when uh, Jesus instituted this, uh, I don't know what we call it, ceremony, this part of our faith. Some of the, some Christians would call it a sacrament. Whatever it is, something that we do. And it does something to our spirit as we worship him together. We're going to break bread. And, and Jesus said this uh, in Luke 21. I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins, for I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And we did some studying and looking at that last year. What does it mean? But it means that we are the fulfillment of that, that we are, our sin is dealt with, we're welcomed in to the family of God. We're the bride of Christ. We rejoice together in that this morning. And then it says here in Luke, he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. He broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's break bread together now and give thanks to God. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you that your body was broken for us, that you were given that we could be cleansed of our sin, that we could be welcomed into the family of God. And Father, as we take and we eat this this morning, we eat it in faith, giving thanks to you that you have cleansed us, that you have made us whole. says in Luke, then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said, take this and share it among yourselves for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people. An agreement co confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. On Friday, Josh and Jordan exchanged rings as a sign of the covenant. Well, this is what Jesus gave us as the sign of our covenant with him. And we remind ourselves of what he has done for us and what we give to him as we break bread and we drink wine together this morning. Father, we thank you. 
for your blood shed, for this new covenant that we live in. And Father, we rejoice in it today. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we're very aware that this is a very significant week for many people in our church, many of the young people in our church. We're going to pray for them now because they're going back to school. Some of them not been to school for almost six months. So uh, Mary Jane's here and uh, she's going to lead us as we pray for our kids this morning. Yeah, let's pray together whilst you're at home. You might have children even in your house right now. I just wonder whether maybe you might want to gather around them as a family. And we're going to lift up our children and our young people. Father God, we just want to pray for every single child and young person within our church here at Harbour Church and also across the town. There are so many that this week will be returning to school. And Father God, I pray that at a time where there will be such a mix of emotions, such a mix of feelings right now, Father, I pray that you will just come and be with each one. Father, I pray that they will know you with them. Father, I pray that you will bring peace to these children and young people. Father, I pray that you'll give them a confidence as they step out this week. Father God, I pray that you will make them brave and courageous. Father, I pray that where things might be different for them, may they know that you are no different, that your love for them is no different, that who you are is no different. Father, I pray that you will surround them with your love. Father, it says in your word that nothing can separate us from your love. And I just pray this over all our children and young people, that they will walk this coming couple of weeks knowing that nothing can separate them from your love. Father, I pray that they will know who they are in you, that they will know that they are your children, that they are children of God, and that that will give them a confidence this coming weeks. Father, I pray that you'll just be with them, Father. Give them sleep. (laughs) Take away any worries, any fears, and any anxieties. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Sarah's going to continue to lead us in worship. We're going to sing together, uh, Come to the Altar. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are Behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar. 
precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, let's declare, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. For he is God. just glad that the words of that song are so true I hope it's true in your life that you have experienced the power of Jesus well good morning my name's Josh and I've got the privilege of sharing God's word with you this morning hope that I find you well and wherever you are watching this I hope that you are open to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us I know it's often difficult to concentrate. We've been consuming so much media, haven't we, since March? But let's just try and focus in this morning and uh, what I believe God has got for us to hear will be significant for us. Well, like many people around the UK this summer, my family and I enjoyed a holiday in the UK and we travelled up to the Scottish Highlands and it was actually the first time I'd ever really been into Scotland. I'd been just over the border across Hadrian's Wall a few years ago but this was my first trip all the way up to the Highlands. First of all I was quite surprised to find out how big Scotland actually was um, as we drove nine hours just to get there and then another four to five uh, all the way up to Fort William uh, into the Highlands and we uh, climbed Ben Nevis. It was an amazing experience. Ben Nevis is the highest mountain in the UK. It's uh, 1,300, just over 1,300 metres high. And um, it was, I must say, one of the hardest things I've ever done. I kind of underestimated how difficult it was going to be. If you're watching this and you're familiar with Folkestone, we trained, well, in inverted commas, by uh, going on the three hills which we've got here, Sugarloaf Hill and Castle Hill. When we arrived at the Highlands, I thought, ah, oh dear, I think we may have slightly underestimated the height of these mountains. Anyway, we uh, had a, a great day climbing Ben Nevis and we were able to reach the summit where there was snow and all kinds of exciting stuff up there. It was a very, very fun day. It took us about 10 and a half hours to go to the top and all the way back down again. But I wanted to share with you something that happened probably about a quarter of the way up, possibly about maybe a third of the way up, not really sure. Um, but uh, something happened which was quite dramatic. We uh, came to a place where another mountain came down to the side of where we were climbing up and there was this amazing 
valley which had formed with a stream, probably uh, quite some metres below, perhaps 50 metres below where we currently were walking. And there was three waterfalls which came down to meet into this stream, and it was flowing very, very quickly. So we decided it would be a good place to have a stop and enjoy a rest. So we stopped and, and sat on a wall. Now, my daughter Edie, who is 13, she had her backpack on, and she took her backpack off, and uh, she went to take her coat on or, or put her coat on, I can't remember which it was, as the temperature changes quite a lot throughout the walk, so you're forever putting coats on and off and all that kind of thing. Anyway, as she did that, she knocked her bag with her elbow and it went over the back of the wall and it began to roll down this 50 meter drop towards the stream at the bottom. Now, as you can imagine, the uh, sight of a pink rucksack rolling down the hill with all of her belongings in it, including her mobile phone, which she hadn't had for very long, caused quite a panic for Edith. And she began to shout and scream, my bag, my bag. Also, it caused quite a lot of panic with the mountain goats as a pink rucksack rolled towards them and they dispersed rather quickly uh, on different angles. And it began to roll, gaining more and more momentum until I realized it's not gonna stop. It's going to end up in the stream. What do I do? And a hundred different things go flashing through my mind and without really thinking, I took my coat off, jumped over the wall and began to go down this very, very steep bank uh, into uh, where, the, where the bag was rolling. And it continued to roll and it eventually got to the edge of the stream and then dropped down into the stream. And at this point, I couldn't see the bag. So I began to go down. My children then became quite anxious as I actually disappeared down into the stream. I discovered that this quite tranquil stream was in fact flowing rather quickly as the three waterfalls met it and uh, up close it was uh, a lot more terrifying than it was uh, picturesquely 50 metres up. So I, I decided, what do I need to do? I need to try and get this bag out of the stream. Fortunately, it kind of got stuck in a little whirlpool deciding which rock to go round next. So I leant over and by this point, I'm kind of thinking, I'm going to be one of those stories where somebody gets seriously injured rescuing a bag where they really shouldn't have bothered. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness me. So I tried, my, I had a walking stick with me and I tried to scoop the bag out with the walking stick leaning all the way over, but the bag was too heavy and it snapped my walking stick in half. <laughs> and I thought, ah, okay. That was probably why it was five pounds on Amazon and not one of the hundred pound ones. But anyway, I thought, okay, what am I gonna do now? So I leant forward. And I prayed and I said, God, please don't let me fall in here because it was just full of rocks and I would have cracked my head probably and that may well have been the end of me. So I managed to pull the bag out, but it was incredibly heavy, full of water. It had loads of Edie's clothes in it that she'd taken for the walk. And so I managed to pull the bag up and I emerged again at the bottom of the hill. We've actually got a picture of it, uh, which I think is going to just come up on the screen next to me here. And uh, there's a picture of, uh, of me emerging victorious. You have to look very closely at it. If you're looking at a small screen, you probably won't be able to see me at all. But there is a very small version of me down the bottom with the bag. And I, I began to climb back up uh, much more slowly than I'd gone down with an incredibly heavy bag. Managed to get it back up, got the phone out. Fortunately, the phone had been on the top of the bag and actually not much of the water had gone in and it just took a, a day or two for some of, some of the phone to dry out, but the phone was okay. But we, we then couldn't carry on with the bag because it was so full of water. So we emptied the bag out, drained all the clothes out. Loads of other people, of course, were walking, wondering what on earth we were doing. How was the bag that soaking wet? I think while I'd been gone down, some people had thought somebody had fallen down. It was all very, very dramatic. And um, we decided that what we would do is squeeze all the clothes out and leave them in a carrier bag behind one of the rocks. And actually that's what we did. And we carried on um, the ascent to the top. And then when we came back down the same way, we collected the bag. And it was very, very dramatic. And looking back, it's quite funny really. But at the time when I was going down the hill, I thought to myself, this is one of the scariest things I've ever done. What am I doing this for? But afterwards I was kind of thinking about it. And it made me think of something because Many of the things in that bag we didn't actually need for the journey because we ended up leaving them behind. The dramatic event had caused us to empty the bag out of everything but the essential items. And that got me thinking about our lives because at the moment we're all living through a dramatic event which has forced us to stop 
maybe forced us to put down whatever it was we were carrying. For many of us, life stopped completely. And even for those of you watching whose workload perhaps increased, perhaps you work for the NHS or other, you're another key worker, maybe your workload increased. And even if it did, life still doesn't look the same now. Life still is very different. And the COVID-19 outbreak and pandemic has caused us to stop and empty out what we were carrying. And my challenge this morning in my message is what will we pick up again for the rest of the journey? The next couple of weeks we see lockdown eases more and more as we go back to school and we're encouraged to once again go back to the office instead of working from home. And what will we pick up? Will we pick up just everything that we had before and carry on as we were? Or actually, will we take the opportunity that I believe God has given us to be strategic about what we pick up again? Now, of course, Jesus talks exactly like this to his disciples. And I want us to turn to the Gospel of Mark this morning and to chapter 6. I love the Gospel of Mark because you can read it quite quickly and Mark doesn't really kind of go into loads of detail about everything. So if you want a quick run through of the Gospel message, Mark's a great one to, to read through. And we see in chapter 6 and verse, uh, just the last part of verse 6, I'll read it to you. Then Jesus went from village to village teaching the people and he called his 12 disciples together and he began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick, no food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. Wow, interesting words from Jesus. Words that kind of sound almost irresponsible if I could say that this morning. Take nothing for the journey. What was Jesus talking about? One of the things I love about following Jesus is that his teaching is often outrageous. It flies in the face of what we're supposed to do by our current culture and current worldviews. It flies in the face and here this is again some teaching from Jesus which seems to be kind of crazy almost. Take nothing with you, Jesus says, for what I have for you to do next, except for the essentials. And of course, we can interpret these words in many different ways. And people have, of course, over the centuries done exactly that. But this morning, I just want us to focus on each of the items that Jesus talks about, because I believe that they can be significant in helping us to think, OK, this dramatic event has happened, like the bag rolling down the hill. But it's now given us an opportunity to see what is really important. What do we really need to carry on? in what is supposedly now called the new normal. I don't really like that phrase. I don't really like the word normal anyway. New normal kind of sounds even worse, doesn't it? But whatever's happening next, what is it that God would have us to do? Well, first of all, Jesus mentions bread. Take no bread, he says, for the journey. And of course, bread is what we would naturally survive on, isn't it? We discovered on our walk up Ben Nevis that we took far too much food. We were worried that we were going to run out and not have enough. And in the end, we took far too much with us. And when we got back to our tent, we discovered that most of it hadn't been eaten at all or, or even opened. And so Jesus reminds us that we're not to rely on just the natural. You see, the bread can represent many things, can't it, in the Bible. And I think in this instance, it represents our natural instinct to want to do things for ourselves. But God wants us to rely on the Holy Spirit for the journey. He wants us to rely on him, the bread of life. It's one of the titles that Jesus gives himself. Not to rely on natural things for our sustenance and energy, but to rely on the Holy Spirit. As we enter this new normal, will we begin to trust in the Holy Spirit even more? Perhaps you've come to faith for the first time during the pandemic. Perhaps you're exploring things in a new way. Are you gonna allow the supernatural to enter your life through the power of the Holy Spirit and not just rely on the natural? Of course, as Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert, one of the things that he replied was that man does not live by bread alone, but from every word that the Father has. And of course, we have every word right here written down 
for us from him? Will we rely on this? And will we rely on Jesus, the bread of life, as we continue now? Will we put down those other things? What will we pick back up again in terms of what we rely on for our sustenance? Jesus then says, don't take a bag with you. Well, on our walk to Ben Nevis, we all had a bag with us full of many different things. And of course, we went on holiday as well and took even more bags with us. In fact, it was quite funny to see the difference between my eldest two children packing. My eldest son, Isaac, who's 15, took just a small holdall for uh, what was to be a three-week holiday and took hardly anything with him. And my daughter, Edie, took this huge suitcase, absolutely rammed full of everything that she thought she could possibly need for three weeks, most of which, again, wasn't used at all. And Jesus says, don't even take a bag with you, let alone anything in it. Don't even take the bag. Well, what was he meaning by that? Well, of course, a bag can be a burden, can't it? Something that we just carry around with us, maybe without even thinking. And again, this dramatic event on the highlands caused us to empty the bag and leave it behind. What about this dramatic event that we're all living through? Will it cause us to put the bag down? I think of the story of Pilgrim's Progress and the character Christian and how he carries around the burden on his back until he comes to the place of forgiveness. Because often the things that we can carry around with us are either things that we've caused to be in that bag ourselves by our own sin, or perhaps sometimes the mistakes of other people. We can carry those things around with us. But I believe that the current situation in the world has enabled us to put those things down. We can come to Jesus and ask his forgiveness. Come to Jesus and ask for his healing. And we can empty that bag of the things that we don't need. So no bread, no bag. And then, interestingly, Jesus says, take no money. <laughs> take no money with you, which is probably a good thing, I guess, because not many of us have much money at the moment, do we, <laughs> with everything that's been going on. But he also mentions the clothes, the extra clothes. He says, take no money, take no extra clothes with you. Just take the clothes that you're wearing and the sandals on your feet. And again, in other words, God wants us to rely on his provisions not the things that naturally keep us going, a little bit similar to the bread. We can so easily rely on money and our things that we have, even our own giftings perhaps could be included in this. But Jesus calls us to something extra, calls us to something different. And post-COVID, will we just simply just start relying on all that again as perhaps money starts to come back into our lives and possessions start to come back in? Will we just rely on all that again? Or will we actually rely on Jesus, rely on the Holy Spirit? I was reminded of the story of Peter in the book of Acts and the encounters the beggar by the gate, who of course is asking for silver or gold, begging for money. And Peter does something really interesting. He looks at him and he says, well, silver and gold, I do not have. Perhaps because he was still following Jesus' instructions. Maybe that's why he didn't have any on him, because he knew that when he was to go out, he wasn't to take any money. And he says to the beggar, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And this lame man, we read, stands up and jumps about in celebration. How much easier would it have been for Peter just to toss him a few copper coins as they went into the temple? That would have been easy, but instead Peter went out on a limb. And of course, Peter had been so used to relying on his own natural abilities. It had got him into so much trouble. Think about him chopping off the ear of the soldier at Jesus' crucifixion. Or of course, Jesus famously telling him that he was almost Satan as he tried to advise Jesus on what to do next, again in the natural. But now we see Peter not operating like that, but operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. How about you? How about me in this new world that we enter into? Will we just continue to rely on what we're good at, rely on what we have, or will we actually be relying on the Holy Spirit and doing some scary things, doing some bold things, stepping out and seeing a miracle in the lives of people around us? They're the things then that Jesus tells us not to take. And then he tells the disciples to take a, a staff with them, a, a, a stick. And I 
just briefly touch on this before we finish, because staffs and, and sticks are mentioned quite a lot in the Bible, of course, famously in the story of Moses. Moses' staff represents the power of the Holy Spirit in his life as he does everything that God would want him to do. Of course, the miraculous signs and wonders that he performs using that staff. And of course, they're mentioned in many other places, but particularly, I was thinking in Psalm 23, where we read quite near the beginning, your rod and staff protect and comfort me. And of course, there we have the image of the shepherd and the sheep, and Jesus as the shepherd and us as the sheep. And the truth is, sheep are often quite stupid, aren't they? <laughs> Wandering off, getting lost, being disobedient, not doing what they're supposed to be doing, going after the better grass, getting their heads stuck in a fence, trying to get hold of something. All those sorts of things that we can encounter when we go into the countryside. And of course, the shepherd's crook or rod or staff is there to direct the sheep. And so, will we allow Jesus to direct us? Or will we be stubborn? <laughs> will we be stupid like the sheep and just want to go our own way? Or will we allow that staff that we carry the staff of protection, the staff of comfort, maybe like the staff of Moses, the staff of power, will we allow that into our lives as Jesus directs us, as Jesus perhaps even disciplines us? That's uncomfortable, isn't it? But of course, that is what the shepherd does with his sheep. To finish with, the commentator Matthew Henry writes quite a lot about this part of the Bible and Jesus' teaching. And he suggests that perhaps the disciples were to go out like this to appear poor, to appear, in fact, otherworldly to the people that they encountered, that they would appear different because they didn't have these things around them that perhaps everybody else had. I thought what an interesting thought that as we go forward into the new world, into the new normal, are we too going to look different? Of course, in the Beatitudes we read, don't we, that Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Often difficult to understand, but really if we just replace the word poor with the word humble, blessed are the humble in spirit as we allow God to direct our paths. So this morning, my challenge to you and my challenge to me is that this event, this COVID-19 outbreak has presented us with an opportunity to not just simply pick everything back up again and carry on as normal, but in fact just to pick up the essentials that God would have us to pick up. And so my challenge to you watching this morning, and to me and to the rest of us here, is will we just simply pick up everything that we had before and carry on? Or, like us on the mountain, will we take stock? Will we stop? Will we remove some of the things from our bag and just carry on with the things that God would have us to do? Carry on on the journey that God would want us to be on. Perhaps the journey would begin for the very first time. Perhaps for you this morning watching this, you're yet to follow Jesus. And you can start that journey this morning. It's very simple. All we do is come to him and first of all say sorry. <laughs> sorry for doing it my way. Sorry for packing my own bag. Sorry for using my own stuff all the time. And we simply say, Jesus, will you forgive me? And then we say, Holy Spirit, will you come? Will you come and dwell within me? Will you come and help me to follow the example of Christ? If we do that, we can begin a journey of adventure, which can lead us to the summit of a mountain, could lead us to miraculous events. But will we be brave enough to do that today? Let me pray, and then we're going to sing a song which will enable us to respond. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have written it down for us to help us, challenge us, encourage us, teach us. Jesus, we thank you for your teaching. Thank you for its outrageous nature. Lord, we pray that we would have the courage to follow your teaching as lockdown eases further, we would have the courage not to simply carry on doing what we were doing before, but we would be able to hear your voice. I pray for everyone watching. I pray for the team here. I pray for myself that we would have the courage to follow after you, Jesus. Amen. Oh,
of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world ever satisfied. Through every trial, my soul will sing. No turning back. I've been set free. As uh, Josh was telling that story on the, about the mountain, I was remembering an incident that I had on the same mountain in the same place. Looking at Josh now, we uh, when I was young, I'm probably 12-ish, something like that. We went on holiday and we too climbed uh, Benevis, and uh, I remember it was a very hot day. It was the middle of a heat wave, and although it was uh, not as hot on a mountain in Scotland. It was still pretty warm. And I was worried about water. And all the way we're walking up, and that's probably about a third of the way up the mountain, um, I was uh, trying to conserve water, whereas my two brothers 
were guzzling water. And I was afraid there would not be enough water to get to the top. So I was really just sipping gently. And, and my dad would tell you, and if you see him and ask him, he will tell you the story. He said that I was really flagging. And we arrived at that stream, and I drank, and I drank, and I drank. And we refilled our water bottles from the stream. And, and from there on, I had a new lease of life. And I just, uh, as Josh was sharing that, I just wondered if that might be for somebody today. You need to stop. You need to drink. You need to take time to refresh and replenish. Obviously, there's other things you shouldn't take with you when you go. But there's also that moment that we had at the same stream of saying, stop and be replenished. So uh, I, I hope that encourages somebody. And uh, you can ask me to tell you this story properly later. Or my dad will probably tell it to you if you ask him. He loves telling it. There we go. Sarah. Follow that. Um, yeah, Gareth, I, I just wanted to take a moment to actually pause um, and just actually reflect on um, an incredible man called Stuart King, who this week has gone to be with Jesus. And, and if you don't know who I'm talking about, Stuart King is the co-founder of MAF, Mission Aviation Fellowship. And for 75 years, he dedicated his life um, to, to reach the remotest parts of this world um, yeah, in, in mission. And so Stuart King this week went home to be with Jesus at the age of 98. And I just felt, Gareth, it was right for us just to pause and just to give thanks to God for his life, for his legacy. We're aware that obviously living here in Folkestone um, and just within our own church community here at Harbour, um, many people work for MAF. And so Stuart's passing will have quite an impact. And maybe you're watching this morning and you're one of those people that have worked with him, know his life. And so we just want to today give thanks to God. So shall I just pray, Gareth, and just, just do that right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Stuart King. We thank you for the incredible legacy that he leaves behind. We thank you that for sure he is having the well done, good and faithful servant. We thank you that, that all of heaven is just welcoming Stuart right now. And we today, in the light of Stuart's leaving us and, and going home, we want to dedicate our lives to you. We pray that you would help each one of us to walk in obedience to the call that's on our lives. Thank you for many people like Stuart. We might not have even known Stuart, but we know of many people that have set an incredible example for us. And today we just pause and remember and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, so just be mindful of praying, um, certainly for Stuart's family and, and, and the MAF community as they just, just process. And of course, give thanks to God. It's great to be able to celebrate, isn't it, Gareth? It's just a, a life well lived. Well, we're beginning to draw this, uh, this service to a close. We really want to thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for, um, yeah, we don't, want to, we don't like the word watching. We hope you haven't watched. I really hope you've been a part of this, that you've engaged in worship. You've been encouraged from the great word we heard. Can we give a thank you to Josh? There's a few people in the room. If you want to give a thank you, uh, thanks, Josh. Um, Again, I'm just going to say a thank you to all our techie team. Come on, everyone. Just, let's just thank to our musicians, to everyone. Um, I, uh, Josh, you were always the one that, that reminded me on what week we were on. Do you still know? No, he's looking at me now with a look of, I don't know, I don't know. We're, we're in the 20s, 30s. I don't know what we are. Maybe at home, you know. But, but many weeks that we have been live streaming our Sunday services. In a minute, Gareth's going to just tell you our next step on this journey and where we're going with that. Before he does, though, I just want to say happy birthday to Jack. Jack Hearn, it is your birthday today, I've been told, and you're somewhere in the early 30s still. I'm a bit jealous of that. I wish I was still in the early 30s. But anyway, so happy birthday, Jack. It was my daughter's birthday yesterday. I'll be in trouble if I don't mention her. So happy birthday, Kezia. And it's my brother's birthday tomorrow. So again, if I don't mention Simon, I'll be in trouble as well. So happy birthday. And, um, and, and yeah, I haven't actually checked Facebook. So forgive me if, if I've forgotten your birthday. But just want to, um, yeah, just pray God's blessing on you. And finally, what, the other thing that we always do in our service is remind you about your giving. And, and so we just want to say thank you 
for the way that so many of you have just chosen to give online. And all the information will be coming up now. I say that by faith every week. Is it? It is. I don't know who does that, whether it's one of the guys at the back or whether it's still Katie Lockie at home. I really don't know. But whoever no, does it, that, It comes you. across the screen as a banner. Thank Sarah. you. So that's just fantastic. So if you want to be able now, to, to give, um, it. it's there. Harbour at, all the information there. If you want to be able to uh, give um, your, your offering, to be able to give to God, then you can do all that online. And we want to pray God's blessing on you as you do so. So, Gareth, we have, we, yeah, let's just talk about the next step in the journey, where we're going. It's September soon. And so, um, yeah, over to you, Gareth. So you will know that we've had a couple of events on Wednesday nights where we've had people in the building. Well, next Sunday, we want to do that on Sunday morning. So we're going to invite you to book Can I now in. go, yay, yay, yay. Yay, I'm, yay, whoop, 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 yay, yay. Can you just say that line again? We want to. Next Sunday, we're going to have people in the building. Yay. <laughs> Although you can hear there are already some people in, <laughs> mostly our families and the tech guys and the musicians. It's not just back but to school, uh, it's yeah. back to church, back to church. So obviously we're still limited with numbers, you're going to need to book in via Eventbrite. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Also, the government have changed uh, their advice since we met on a Wednesday night. So we're going to need to wear masks if we're in a, here in the congregation. Obviously, those on stage won't be able to. But the rest, we're going to ask, uh, well, we need to ask you to wear a mask. If you don't have one, we'll have some at the door to give you. So don't worry about that. Obviously, uh, we're going to have to be observing social distancing distancing so we want you to book in in your family bubbles that will help us because then we can put you close together and far apart from other people and so we really want to uh, start to bring in as many people as we can we're going to go cautiously to begin with we're going to on eventbrite we're going to put up two sundays at a time so obviously the numbers for next sunday will be limited if if you find that the spaces are gone please book in for the following sunday uh, as it is, we think we'll probably be able to fit most people who want to come at this stage over two weeks. So you may be able to come every other week to church for the moment if you want to. We also understand that people will not be comfortable coming yet to church. So we're very aware of that. And we will continue to stream and we'll continue uh, to do the things that we've been doing. But we'll be doing it with uh, certainly some of the church in the room with us, which is uh, fantastic. These are our first steps really back uh, towards these things. I'm just checking my list to see that I've said everything. Oh, the only other thing that I really wanted to say is if you try to book in via Eventbrite and it says it's full, keep trying because it may be that we can, uh, as we space families around the room, around tables, we'll decide that actually we can fit another table or two in the building. So uh, don't uh, give up. And uh, certainly uh, keep contacting us. Let us know if you want to come, if you've not been able to book in. I know that some of you are not uh, easily able to use Eventbrite. If that's the case, then just uh, talk to your Connect leader or talk to one of us here in the office, and we'll book you in on the Eventbrite system uh, for you. So just uh, give us a phone call or something like that to let us know. Uh, obviously, uh, that's not up yet. Hopefully, it'll go up later today or tomorrow, and we'll get that uh, ready to go. Is there anything else I should have said, Sarah? No, I think I think he's actually said it all. I'm going to look towards MJ. Has he missed anything? Don't think so. No, look at that. So fantastic. That's exciting, Gareth. Really exciting. We're, we're definitely feeling the need, or we just recognise it's time just to get back together again. So uh, this is exciting. So let's be praying about that as a church. Those two Wednesdays that we had were really good, weren't they? Just brilliant. If you joined us on those Wednesdays, you'll know. Felt a little bit odd, let's be honest, but... It was good. And the great thing is, is that we will be able to have worship in the room. So it won't be congregational, sung worship, but just as we've had this morning, um, uh, and just like we had at the wedding, um, because again, some of the guidance has changed in that, which is fantastic. So we're able to have the band here and the music, which we weren't able to do on those Wednesdays, will we, Gareth? But we can now. So come along, come and enjoy, and let's be in the room together and, uh, and be family. So that's great. Great. Do you want me to pray? <laughs> Sarah's going to pray as we finish. I tell you what, I'm just, no, I'm just going to say, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us all. And let's look forward to being together next week. God bless you. Bye. i
Jesus, my Lord. I hear your call. I give my all. Jesus, lead me forth. Jesus, my Lord, I hear your call, I give my own. Jesus, please. 